everybody, how's it? Aloha. Ah, that last Throwback Thursday just dropped. Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me. Uh, just fun listening. I thought one of the really fun series of comments that I got through that uh, was the fact that there were a lot of people that remember it, but they weren't even born when it first came out, but it was in their parents' playlist. And that's part of our soundtrack of music, right? So let's just say you maybe it wasn't even your most favorite song, but your parents kept playing it. <coughs> Excuse me, that's now a part of your soundtrack of life. And, uh, you know, it remembers you of the time with the parents, good, bad, or indifferent, whatever the case is. Because music, you know, ties its theme into that whole history, you know. That's why we call it the soundtrack of life. Anyhow, so I'm going to be doing a game uh, game theme. I had quite a few emails in the course of the few months going, dude, you got to do game themes and stuff. And they kept dropping these things. I listened to it a little bit. And I go, I don't know if I got it. And then I realized I'm looking around. I went, oh, my goodness. My brother used to play this, I believe, I remember. And so just by virtue of me remembering, oh, maybe there's something on this I'll recognize. This is definitely nothing that I'm going to be going long form on and stuff as far as, you know, that's what I do. But I definitely want to have fun. Today is one of those days where I'm having fun, okay? So uh, we're going to do Halo theme song. And um, I want to thank you guys. For those of you who have bought me a cup of coffee, thank you so much. You know my channel's not monetized. Any advertisement that runs is copyright claims by the owners, not me. So the coffee comes in handy. Super mahalo for that. Also helps what I do with the kids. Uh, the link for what I do for the kids is also down below. And uh, AKG 240s. All right. If you like uh, some studio quality uh, headsets that are not a bazooka million dollars but have been in the industry since the Last Supper, AKG 240s. All right. Let's do this. I have no idea what to expect here. Halo theme song. All right. <laughs> I kind of remember this now. I think when my brother would like leave the game or something, the thing would I, I would hear in the background or another room or something that this thing is looping through or something. <clears throat> um, this has got a really great rhythm. Now, at first, I'm, I'm just chilling into it. And I'm listening to this kind of Gregorian style, you know, vocal opening and you know, like a bunch of monks that are chanting, kind of, or not a chanting, but. You know, holding these melodies and stuff. And I'm getting into it. Now, I'm first thing I'm going to say is I can almost... My feeling is that none of this is live. I mean, it's not real strings. It's not uh, real voices and stuff. But I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, please be gentle. Clear it up. Um, when it starts to come out of it, and then the there's a little soundscape in the background. Soundscape means non-musical, uh, ambient kind of sounds that create... You know, it can create space, it can create darkness, it can create all kinds of stuff, but it's a soundscape and doesn't have a tonal quality necessarily. And that starts to build in there. Now all of a sudden you got the, the their percussion coming in, whatever it could be, if it's supposed to be timpanis or whatever it is, or what we might call um, movie percussion um, type percussion. Um, we start getting into... And that's kind of like in range. I'm thinking like a cello or something. 
um, and it could be doubled up with what's called, they're called double basses, if you guys have ever seen orchestras play, the guys that stand up, that's, you know, double bass. And then cello, like Yo-Yo Ma. And then there's viola, which is kind of a fatter version of a violin, all with incredible tonal value, obviously. So they've established that. So I'm listening to this, and before I geek, I geek out a little bit on the classical arrangement on this, <coughs> all of a sudden my mind, even though I'm doing something completely different here right now and I'm having a good time with this, all of a sudden my mind went, oh my God, could you imagine if like Periphery covered this? I'm thinking, I mean, think about it, okay? Think about this for a second, hang on. So that, um, what, what, is, what is the one staple of a lot of the, um, the progressive metal that we listen to is a chug, right? So what if that bottom line was a chug? You know what I mean? That that would be the setup and that would be the chug and stuff. And then as the melody builds that we're hearing here, each one of the musicians peel off into their own melody. And when I say peel off, now I'll go back into kind of a little classical breakdown-ish. I don't want to go there, but it's a very, very tough crowd. <clears throat> is that now as the uh, arrangement started to develop a little more, um, uh, the melodic arrangements of each instrument started to grow a little differently. And they had their own life. And what that means is, is that one line could be going, da 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 and coming this way while the viola is holding another completely different melody and then the violins come in and do a completely different melody but all in unison you know written in the same key or or or, or scale or whatever the case is or that's all of the above uh, you have an arrangement and orchestras are very complex and very different dynamics but I was really getting on the um, there there's some really super cool arrangements that are, that are going on in here and, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I'm sure that other musicians that have listened to this, if they were playing this, this game, whatever, um, had probably stopped for a second and gone, hey, that's pretty deep, man. Anyhow, so I thought that was really super cool. But in my mind, I'm still, you know, even though I'm kind of playing around and having a good day today, you know, and, and listening to this, I automatically, I still, I'm still the metal guy. I'm still like, oh, could you imagine that? And I, automatically, I thought of Periphery because of how they have a propensity to... There is some classical, I've heard some of their, you know, um, compositional entrances to some of the, the, one of their tracks that did that. So automatically I went, could you imagine these guys got creative? Anyhow, I goober, because I can. All right. Now, if I can get that, I don't know what that glitch was. I'm sorry if you heard a couple of spacey little glitchy weirdness going on there, but um, now I'm just going to get just slightly a little more serious about this. Um, you know, when I'm assuming, I'm assuming because I've only written for games on a demo level, like I've submitted, you know, I never got, you know, the gig and stuff and the stuff that I've ever uh, written for games on a demo have been more straightforward power charging, whether it was kind of metal -y stuff or synth, synth hybrid metal, you know, because there's chases going on. And then it dawned on me when I was listening to this, I forget, this This is like, this is soundtrack music uh, because it's theater to the mind. It's just that you, as the actual participant in theater, because you're playing a game, you know, um, becomes part of that background of the whole experience here. 
So my brain kind of switched a little bit and I really enjoyed, um, really enjoyed, I really enjoyed um, the textures of the composition uh, and the nuances of it. At the very end when the voices kind of creep back in, there was a really nice, um, it sounded, there was, you know, um, first and a third, nice little harmony that was pretty kind of close in um, as I was just moving up and down the scale. I really just liked that. It was very subtle, but it was very, very super cool. Then you saw me at the end kind of go, and that's where there was just this last little twist of more to come with this one super low bass note that came in down there. And um, it, 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 it really put me in a really super cool space. And to end on that, the word space. I'm looking at the logo, I'm remembering when my brother had walked by and my brother was playing it and it's apparently, you know, has to do with kind of an outer spacey kind of vibe and stuff like that. And this was a really well written um, uh, composition for visual, for media, you know, so anyhow, all right, that's, that's, that's the extent of it. I really dug this and uh, I, I'm going to send this to my brother go, dude, you remember this? <laughs> anyhow, guys, I got one more coming up. It's going to be why does this make your face melt, and uh, it's a very special. It's a very special song to me and my soundtrack of life. But I'd like to think that the things that I choose for whether it's Throwback Thursday or why does this make your so uh, face melt series, is that there's a constant theme in how you and I, as we go through this journey, things that we like. It might ne necessarily be our jam, but I'm beginning to find as I'm looking at some of my older videos I post here that there's there's a constant theme that I seem to have that comes from here that I think marries itself with a lot of the comments when people are saying, how is it that you're doing my whole playlist? And I think universally we also vibe in a way where um, we like certain chord changes. We like certain uh, pieces of music that uh, make us feel a certain way. And so, you know, that's that's a circle of us. Anyhow. Uh, thanks a lot for hanging out. Thanks a lot for the support. So you should see fit if you should. Thank you so much in advance for the cup of coffee. And uh, that does also help with, uh, you know, things I do with the kids. Uh, that link is all down there. And I'll see you in a little bit. Uh, this was killer. I really super dug this. So uh, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to knock that last one out in a few hours. So, all right. Yeah! All right.